Zig and Maha, along with probably Kalato, hold the distinction of being some of the lesser known Zoldics in the series. However, I am here to inform you that the least known family member of all is Subscribe Zoldic, who is an even bigger stain on the family than Miliki, because all Subscribe Zoldic does is push that enticing red button to ensure that he receives regular Hunter Hunter content uploaded straight into his YouTube feed. And look, he's an underachiever in the world of assassins, but I certainly do appreciate him. Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga. And today, we're going to delve into a discussion about a fairly mysterious manga figure of Hunter x Hunter being a certain Zig Zoldic. Now, if you're an anime-only watcher, chances are you will not have heard of this particular Zoldic before, but I would encourage you to stay a while and listen, because there's some fairly intriguing stuff at play here for a character who has only ever been officially seen in one panel. And as a result, you're probably going to be seeing that one panel quite a bit in this video, and for that, I apologize for in advance. But as for manga readers, I'm sure that a lot of you have also seen the runtime of this video and might be scoffing to yourself over how exactly I can say anything of substance in regard to such a seemingly fleeting existence. But to tell you the truth, even I was surprised at just how much there was to potentially digest here. So without further ado, let's begin examining Zig Zoldic through his contextual appearance in the manga. So Zig would make his first and currently only appearance in chapter 344 as part of a flashback featuring Isaac Netro landing on the Dark Continent in his youthful days. Well, comparatively youthful days, I guess. And this was a supposedly unrecorded trip, even though Jing Freak seems to know all about it. But we do know vaguely why Netro was there, which was in search of a strong opponent, something that the Dark Continent was unable to provide, as the only victory there is that of survival. But on this trip, Netro brought two of his young pals, one of which being Lene or Derv, a name that I was crucified for not being able to say, in what has become by far the most popular video on this channel, because I am uncultured swine. But in my defense, even Togashi sucks when it comes to French and, you know, languages in general, actually. Choosing to romanize each of our three explorers' names very bizarrely and inconsistently, which may actually become a point of relevance to this discussion in regards to the third part of this Dark Continent menage a trois, Zig Zoldic. Now, Zig's reasons for traveling to the Dark Continent alongside Netro and Lene are 100% unknown at the time of this recording, and in truth, it seems wildly inconsistent with everything we know about the Zoldic family thus far. As the world's most established and infamous group of assassins, the Dark Continent is not something that should appeal to them from a business standpoint, because there are no clients and there are no targets. It's just a gigantic game of survival of the fittest without a profit motive. But there are some possible explanations for this, one of which is that at the time of Zig's generation, the Zoldics may have not been involved in the assassination business. Because to the best of my knowledge, it has never been stated exactly how long the Zoldic family have been assassins, but it does seem to be incredibly deeply rooted. But then again, at the moment, we can really only dive back at least five generations, with the oldest confirmed Zoldic family member currently being Maha Zoldic, the grandfather of Zeno and the great-great-grandfather of Killua, who is somehow still alive and well to this very day. And trying to see where Zig fits into this family tree is a bit difficult, because there is only one unaccounted for place, which is in between Maha and Zeno. A figure represented in a sort of Heihachi from Tekken style of look. One that obviously immediately does not match up to the established image we have of Zig. Although it should be pointed out that the portrayal of this figure, being the son of Maha and father of Zeno, could just be what Zig came to look like much later in life. Because the image we have of him on the Dark Continent is quite a young whippersnapper, and in fact if we directly compare Netro's previous look to his more modern incarnation, we can see that an awful lot can change over the course of what I assume would have been potentially over a century. The thing that does give me the most pause for thought here though, is that Zig's facial structure does not match this mystery man at all. This guy has relatively thick eyebrows, a very pronounced nose, and a teeny tiny mouth thing, whereas Zig has super thin eyebrows, a tiny nose, and a long mouth. So if anything, Zig resembles Maha significantly more than Maha's son. And that brings us to a very intriguing idea that has been floating around for a while, which is the possibility that Zig is in fact Maha Zoldic. And based on aesthetics alone, I am incredibly inclined to invest in this idea because seriously, Maha just looks like an old man Zig. They are the only members of the Zoldic family who have a head that seems to be more wide than it is tall, which is reflected in all of their key facial features. But the main issue that seems to stop this idea in its tracks is the fact that they are both separately named characters, or are they? I mean, yes, yes they are. But it's very interesting to note that Maha was never actually named in either the manga or the anime. He was just some old man Zoldic dude who made a very brief appearance, and his name was only revealed in the 2004 data book, which was released about 12 years before chapter 344, featuring Zig. 
And I point out that massive time difference because, you know, over time, Hunter x Hunter has developed a wide array of inconsistencies, many of which I do hope to do videos on one day. But 12 years, well, that's an awfully long time in Togashi land. Long enough for him to change his mind in regards to the established facts of the world and decide that no, this guy is actually this guy. And at this stage, I should also point out that if this were any other series, I would never ever propose such an idea. But because this is Hunter x Hunter, literally anything is possible. Plus, if you were to take the context of the manga alone, it just makes perfect sense. If your only source material was the manga and you didn't have that pesky Maha name from the data book, then this probably wouldn't be so much of a discussion on speculation as it would become a practically established fact and not just because they share aesthetic similarities either, but because it also makes sense based on the greater context of the world, specifically in relation to Zig's Dark Continent comrades, Netero and Lene. Now, up until recently, both of them were alive and well, that is until Netero sacrificed himself to prevent the threat of the Chimera Ants. Lene is still alive though, and was even put forward as a candidate to become the next chairman of the Hunter Association. But the fact that she is still alive is nothing short of incredible, just as it was with Netero. But Lene currently presents a rather withered existence, very similar to that of Maha. But these characters are all absurdly old, and no, that is not necessarily a common feature in the Hunter x Hunter world. As we have characters like Xeno, who is a comparatively youthful 67 years old and portrays aging like the normal world lifespan of a human being. Netero, Lene, and Maha are all a very unique existence. And there is a possible explanation for how these three in particular have managed to live for well over a century, which has to do with, you guessed it, the Dark Continent. Because one of the reasons why humankind continues to conduct expeditions to this hellish landmass is because it contains creatures, items and substances of immeasurable value, the kind of stuff that would really revolutionize a species. And one such sought after item is known as nitro rice, the consumption of which is said to be able to extend one's life. And I would imagine that naturally, the more you consume, the more that life is extended, effectively granting you a form of immortality, so long as you engage in constant numbing. And so if Maha were to be Zig, then that provides an immediate explanation as to how these three select individuals have been able to maintain their bizarrely long life. And it doesn't necessarily have to be nitro rice either, there could be any number of other incredible objects or substances on the dark continent that are capable of performing such a thing. The specifics of it doesn't really matter. What matters is that the one thing they all have in common is stupidly long life, and the one place that can provide that is the dark continent. And for posterity's sake, I should also say that this does not necessarily mean that Zig is Maha. If anything, Zig could be a brother of Maha who journeyed with Netero, and upon his return, gifted Maha with nitro rice or whatever was used. But I find that explanation honestly just a little bit harder to believe, because if such a substance was brought back to the human realm, then it would surely have revolutionized more than just the life of one man. Whereas in reality, it seems more like a thing that the Dark Continent trio would have consumed in a desperate survival situation, and they may not even have necessarily known about its effects. And once again, if Maha's name wasn't in a data book published 12 years ago, then we wouldn't even need to find an excuse like this. It's only information from a notoriously unreliable book that stops everything from falling perfectly into place. But putting the Zig Maha business aside for a second, it's also an interesting discussion to ask a bit more about the actual Dark Continent voyage with Netero, because there's one that we know lines up almost perfectly, which is the journey instigated by the Mimba Republic, which landed at the southeast shore of Lake Mobius. Now, quite notably, this was not the expedition in search of nitro rice, the proposed longevity substance, but instead they were hunting for something known as the Trinity Elixir, which is a very vaguely defined mother solution for all sorts of liquid. Great societal value. However, by the end of this expedition, there were only three survivors, which is a very magic number, given that we only know of three individuals of Netero's expedition, and three individuals that up until recently were all still alive. Plus, this particular voyage is also what brought back the Calamity Eye. And just quickly, in case you're not familiar, a Calamity is something imposed on humanity by a being known as the Guide in what we can only assume is some sort of punishment for their exploration of the Dark Continent. And there are currently five established threats who were brought back via this method, and one cast upon the human race in this case was I, the gaseous being or group of beings known in full as a codependence of desire. Now I'm not going to go into this here because I've done a whole video on it, link in the description below if you're interested, but I is almost 100% confirmed to be Nanika, the ghastly being that currently inhabits Alakazoldic and has the ability to grant seemingly any desire upon the fulfillment of certain conditions. So upon initial thought, it would make perfect sense for the Mimbo Republic expedition 
to be the one which involved Netro, Linné, and Zig, as the threat brought back has directly infected a member of the Zoltic family. And any other explanation would be a pretty huge coincidence because of all of the people in this world to bond with, it just happened to be the descendant of an individual who has been to the Dark Continent himself. However, as convenient as this is, there are a couple of problems with this theory, one of which is that Jing Freaks has stated that Netro conducted this voyage unofficially and effectively snuck into the Dark Continent with Linné and Zig, meaning that it's highly unlikely that they would have been associated with the Mimbo Republic trip. And furthermore, it's also been said that all three survivors of this Mimbo Republic journey had lost all of their sanity as a result of encountering I. The second part doesn't overly concern me though, because we've seen nothing of Linné and Zig and or Maha that truly proves any semblance of sanity. And as for Isaac Netero himself, well, sanity is not something that I would so readily accuse him of having possessed. And I suppose now we should also state the possibility that Zig did not survive his trip to the Dark Continent because we only have solid confirmation that Netro and Linné have been seen alive in the modern day, discounting the whole Zig is Maha idea, of course. I mean, I highly doubt that he would have perished with such powerful allies by his side, but until any further confirmation is achieved, the possibility definitely remains. And going back to the question of why he may have chosen to travel to the Dark Continent in the first place, other than because he and Netro were bestest friends forever, he may have even had business there because we do know of at least one human figure who seems to be something of a permanent resident of this hellscape, which is Don Freaks. So imagine for a second a world where Zig Zoldic, for whatever reason, is given a lucrative contract to assassinate Don and thus potentially being the earliest known freak Zoldic interaction, which would culminate down the line of many, many generations in the world's most unbreakable bond between Gon Freaks and Killua Zoldic. In any case, as it turns out, Zig Zoldic is a far more intriguing figure than a simple one panel appearance would suggest. And that pretty much does it for this discussion about Mr. Zig Zoldic. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the New World Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share, or subscribe because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on Zig Zoldic. This has been the New World Review, and I'll see you next time.